good evening all of you. It's my great pleasure to introduce my PhD supervisor with whom I work. Uh, so I'll read some of the things because to read his, uh, to do introduction for Professor T.P. Singh, uh, I think it's a very great deal or job, but he has given me this job. I was requesting uh, Dr. Neil that no, you should give because uh, there are so many things about Professor T.P. Singh we can keep talking. Uh, it's, uh, so much contribution, but I'll just read whatever the protocol says that way. So, Professor T.P. Singh works in the Department of Biophysics in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Delhi. Uh, he obtained his MSc degree from University of Allahabad in 1971 uh, and PhD degree from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore in 1976. He worked as an Alexander von Humboldt Foundation and Max Planck Postdoctoral Fellow in Max Planck Institute of Biochemistry in Germany 1978-80 and then he obtained a Doctor of Science BSc uh, from Karnataka. So Dr. T. P. Singh is a fellow uh, that, uh, to us the World Academy of Sciences, the Indian Institute of Science Academy, New Delhi, Apenne, the Academy of Sciences, Bangalore, APSC, the National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad, FNSC and the Biotech Research Society of India, APRS. He received the Professor G. N. Ramachandran Award of the Kerala State Council of Sciences, uh, Technology and Environment 2017. Uh, he delivered the Professor G. N. Ramachandran Lecture of the Central University of Karina in 2016. He received the Lifetime Achievement Award of the Biotech Research Society in 2015. He delivered the Professor G. N. Ramachandran Lecture of the Society of Biology Chemistry in 2015. So, and there are so many, I think uh, it will take at least half an hour to read about his biodata. He received the Professor G. N. Ramachandran CSR Gold Medal for Excellence in Biological Sciences and Technology. He received the Professor G. N. Ramachandran 60th Workday INSA Medal in 2006. And his field of research interests include X-ray crystallography, protein structure, protein design and drug discovery. Professor T.P. Singh has published more than 300 papers in very high reputed journals and he is the one who has published, uh, deposited maximum number of protein structures because this crowd is something you know from the entire institute. The protein structure is very important for doing function and then for drug design. So he is the number one in doing maximum number of structures in this country. And so that's a great achievement uh, by Professor T.P. Singh. And most of these students are in highly uh, uh, best institute of India and abroad. Uh, so I request uh, Professor T.P. Singh to come and uh, uh, deliver his uh, lecture on never ending. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, before I begin, I must thank profusely Dr. Adil Kumar. Gaurishit, Amir Kumar, and I must say that coming to Rutu is not very, is not something very for me. I have so many old friends, my students and many new friends, so I am very delighted to be here. But I must warn, Pramit was trying to be, we should not be seen like this, but otherwise he was trying to provoke me and tell some stories about these guys also. <laughs> so I, I, I've been coming here many, many times before, so the work one is here. I'm very happy to be here, and uh, when they invited me, they said there's a very special lecture, in the sense that this is not meant for biotechnology uh, faculty and students. It's meant for everybody, I think. Meant for engineering students, teachers, civil engineering, the fathers from molecular science. So they, I sent an abstract, and they found my abstract very unfit for for title box content. For it. it should also change. So I changed the abstract. So they, they provincial indicated that only one word is desirable for IIT Rutgers, that is antibiotics. Well, I modified that title again 
I think that's time to write the writing. But I was continuously thinking to change, to make it look very simple. But I would just type something very simple for, for all of you, uh, of, uh, from a common point of view. If you physics people should be my target or engineering people should be my target. It's just something, I think these kinds of talks, in my opinion, should be more inspirational and should be from that point of view. So, and also, I think if you have anything, any, you feel something in between on when we are taught that are leading the kind of discussion, you should say this. So this, that we might have changed the gist of what I'm saying is really saying. So we have already some discussion while visiting when there are microbiologists in the audience and normally we come to visit it. You become conscious when you talk about their, their organisms. So we were talking about, uh, and my colleague here, she was raising a question that the drugs are not being made 15 years, 16 years. So people look worried. We are looking worried. Also there is a kind of thing that uh, if this much time it takes, and I will say that not only this much time, we are not getting drugs these days, but then we will see why, uh, how, why this is happening. But just to, can we have this light off? So that this reflection will be not there. So when they were talking about disasters, disaster management, one of the issues, one of the issues is that how do you deal with disasters from organisms, spread of organisms? Sometimes they are used as warfare as well. Sometimes naturally they are held. They sort of... Oh, okay. Good. So when you talk about anything related to infections, how do, how do you deal with infections when organisms, pathological organisms, Attack you. How, how does your body and how do you protect yourself? So this slide primarily shows that how how do we deal with them? So how do we deal with them? I think first and foremost is something what we call an innate immune system we all have. All of us have germline protein molecules. As soon as there is a you are in the way your body is invaded by pathological organisms. The molecules of this innate immune system, it is there, it's automatically there. And the role of proteins from this system are primarily and essentially to protect you. And to protect you totally. However, we know that in spite of this being there, we continue to suffer. The problem, where the problem, problem may be with these proteins, problem may be the way we produce these proteins, the, the way these proteins behave, and that could be dependent on many things, something genetic, something cultivated genetic, so all those things may happen. So we are not protected at times by our innate immune system, we should protect us. Then when this does not happen, in addition to this, we have adaptive immunity, which has antibodies, we all know antibodies, but also you all know what vaccines are. So these proteins specifically interact with the specific proteins from the organism and try to protect you, and that also doesn't happen. But we know that so much goes on in producing vaccines to protect you from infections. So this also is not, we are not, we are having problems by the, these two things which are part of your, part of your body. Then we were very lucky many, many years before, when the case before, some molecules were incidentally discovered and they turned out to be very potent. And they turned out to be so potent that we were protected for many years, but we know now every time, now and then, we hear that there are bugs, super bugs, 
which are not affected hello we is in some way my own student so so we are not protected so these were protecting us very well and because these were protecting us very well we didn't do much in this time we got some synthetic antibacterial so wait but this didn't happen uh, very extensively so this is the scene these are the four ways you can protect yourself from infections now just i think when we talk about these things we only start thinking what was happening before when we had no idea of any drug molecules we had no idea of antibiotics we had no idea of what goes on inside the body we had very limited knowledge how were people surviving centuries and many centuries ago there is a survival of the fittest if you are and the bacteria all the organisms were there So if you see this part of the world, this just to give you an idea that wherever there was an end of development, where civilization was at some stage, at some good stage, people started applying mines and they were using certain materials. And these materials, you can read it, some rotten stuff, some strange materials. and when they applied them it was not a scientific approach just by an observation so when you you are desperate you use things and when they use them they found beneficial effects they they were cured by of these infections but the point of this slide is that this part of the world the civilization was ahead of the rest of the world they were using such a materials all that they don't know what is what they contain so it's something like this part of the world was ahead rest of the world so you you this just to give you an idea that science could progress geographically shift locations then when some parts of the world evolved or became better industrial knowledge grew there you see this then you see that that those materials if you read out from these things they started applying those materials which were observed by people in the different locations of the world and then people started asking questions as to what they these substances contain and slowly they identified but the first time was this in when this 1928 is a lot of the planning the science that time was a very fascinating way so these things were going on this man was trying to study bacterial culture the growth of bacteria just uh, previously experiment done they were not done in some kind of idea the very very sort of knowledge behind this so he put up that a dish for back to go to bent away on holidays and he hop going on holidays in that part of the world is something very common and then left the petri dish open and when it came back there was a kind of fungus grew on the dish and then he noticed that where the fungus grew back to the diet so that was that click so somebody has to have this much brain train that you can see what it means what it meant so that's how first time first antibiotic penicillin was discovered at that time and then other people started testing this chemically isolating this characterizing this eventually it was found that it is a chemical known as penicillin from a fungus and then subsequently it triggered that people started isolating most of the compound from other organisms and started modifying them chemically in the in chemistry labs and that's how they they multiplied the antibiotics and so on but yes 
cycle. This is a kind of cycle you see that it was discarded here and so much advantage. When the antibiotics came in, the back, this treatment became very simple. By the time we came into this 1990s, people started finding that some bacteria are not affected by these antibiotics. There were many antibiotics by that time. But so there is something that bacteria became resistant to antibiotics. So obviously we are antibiotic bound. They bound to some proteins in bacteria. So bacteria modify those proteins. Proteins can be modified really by changing a few amino acids. As a result, the structure may alter, chemistry is alter. So the antibiotic substance may not bind. So that is the problem. So now we are at a stage, we are at a stage prior to what happened in Western Europe. We are at a stage to pre-antibiotics era, back to the stage where India was contributing in terms of knowledge of applying certain materials. So now as the geography is again changing, we have to think about if antibiotics are not effective, what do we do? And what do we do? I think there is a depiction that you can see why we are not able to produce new compounds which are effective with antibiotics or antibacterial substances. And why pharmaceutical companies are not interested? Over the years, lifestyle diseases like diabetes, cardiovascular problems, and there are many sort of drugs in that, standard drugs, little modifications, and they are making their, they are producing their money for living, they are not bothered about <coughs> taking risks in the sense that, first thing is that these infections are located in certain part of the world, so they find that it may not be economically viable, and you might have to spend a lot of money. So this challenges to us, to scientific community. So you see that scientists made very little because antibiotics were so good, so only few compounds, some sulfonamides here, some cyclic peptides here, some chlorons here, so very little was done. So now we have a situation there, we need to do a lot. This is not a very deep scientific slide, just to give you a gist that, that, that how do we do, how do we make molecules, what are the ways we can make molecules now, which could be effective and antibacterials. So these are the four very rough ways to say that, that you all must be knowing that this Ayurveda, this natural plants, natural products, we thought in the past we got also that there are many, many plants which might have some compound, which might have good therapeutic effects. So this is one way that lots of labs or the company are trying to isolate uh, compounds from natural sources, primarily plants. But I would say that this era is over. This methodology, this approach is not going to give you any new molecule. Because the kind of potency, kind of drugs we are looking for at this moment, they have to have much higher potency, which cannot come by this route. But you know, a lot of money is being invested, so at first have been on. And then that's where the chemistry people, yourself, that this combinatorial approach, there are some leads, there are some observations of positive effect. So what you do that, just modify, keep modifying, keep adding group, deleting group, combinatorial chemistry what's done, and then create large number of molecules and test them that they have any application. But this kind of trial and error approach is not going to deliver you drugs. Then we have this situation that rational structure based approach that you have a target a protein which is involved in that or if any bacterial protein important for pathway to bacteria. Get information about this protein, design compounds to block its action, and then you might succeed. Although we are not producing many drugs here, the scientific this looks very rational. And the other one, 
that many pharma companies and many chemistry labs, they just, since they cannot think, they cannot find ways, they just keep on making some compounds. Many times, aromatic derivatives, keep large number of compounds, create quality library, so use libraries are created. So many people will test them, some people will do computationally and say these compounds may have good effect. So this process is going on. This is just to say that these are the ways pharmaceutical companies and, and investigators in lab are working, but obviously we are not having much success. Now this is just to say that why this rational approach is likely to be succeeding. It is not succeeding now, so there could be many issues that we do not have the right target proteins and we may not have details of these proteins. But once we have that, the cycle will produce drugs very fast. In the sense that the day we have structures of all the proteins, all the proteins from living organisms, so we'll have this information. And as soon as we realize that this is an important protein for life in bacteria, we can block its function and then to produce compounds. So this is just to say that way. Now coming to this, how are we contributing this to this? In our lab, we are working at large number of proteins. So one of the goals is that we should determine the structures of all the proteins and contribute to a database is something similar to create a library, but creating a library of real importance that if the structures of all the proteins are known and if we understand that which protein is critical for uh, function of a bacteria, then we could use this as a target, use information from the structure and design compounds. So this is something I, I must tell you historically the first man who wanted to do this factor determination in India see this methodology of protein structure determination using X-ray method and now NMR methods are better and of course new methods are coming up like cryo or microscopy. This is in some sense in biological sciences. People start at the last if you will see the scene in the world, the biology may be happening, chemistry may be happening, but this part of the science appears as the last activity in those countries. So this happens at later. So this is something which has to be carried out. So he was the one just to give you an idea that people in India have capability, have quality. And the quality of human resource we have is, is very powerful. It needs to be exploited. So in those years, since there were no facilities, we have many facilities done. So he wanted to do the structure determination, but it was impossible to do that. It was impossible to do that anywhere in the world. It was 1950s and 60s. 1950s, essentially. At that time, we determined the structure of collagen, theoretically with the help of very small uh, fibers of collagen protein doing very small experimental work. And he was the first to predict the structure of collagen, triple F collagen, from India in 1950s, when there was no science going on. So this contribution in that sense was much greater, much greater than C. V. Raman's discovery. So in Nobel Prize it is not a kind of thing that we have to think so much about this, but this was the greatest contribution. So he also gave a contribution which is so valuable for all of us today that when protein molecules which are synthesized in the linear chain polymers, they fold. They fold because there is a possibility for a large number of attractive interactions when they fold. And when they fold, since they have unique chemical structure, they fold into unique three-dimensional structure and this folding determines their function. So he was the one who gave that certain types of 
where the protein folds through certain rotations can happen and certain cannot happen. And that is a validation we do even today. The whole world does it. That was given by him in 1950. And they also gave this. This is just to give me an idea that scientific research with many facilities, we can be very competitive. The scientific research with limited facilities, also we can work hard to be competitive. But it has to be competitive. It has to be a front-line research. So this is how he determined that this linear chain, these rotations, only can have specific values. That was given by him. The first protein structure determined from USA, where many people wanted to go many years before. This was an Indian postdoc. Eventually he got a job, his name was Gopinath Kartha. He was he did a PhD with Jian Ramachandran in the University of Madras. And the first protein structure from that country came out from him. He died in 1984 very early. It was not a bacterial infection, I think it was some cancer related disease. So if you, if you see that, that, that shows that human resource in our country is very strong. We need to be organized. And I should tell you one, one incident. I was in BHT in the first week of March, and a professor in biotechnology showed me an SMS on his mobile. An American professor wrote, and he said that looked like, a, looked like he was using a language of an Indian, it looked like, but he was not an Indian. He said that, why do you people go here and there? You have so much potential. You can try to make your country create a gain if you stay there and work hard and produce good drugs. That was his message. If somebody had written for a postdoc position or some position, that was a very party friendly, party sort of thing. That I think you must take a clue from this. So when you do structures of proteins, they are they are part of a database, and any any research today has to become part of a database. Then only it can go further. So these structures become part of a database known as protein data bank. And protein data bank stores information about protein structures. And if you see from this slide. You can see a lot of work here, a lot of work in this part, and some growth is happening here and there significantly. And if you see, this was 2008, and if you see in 15 and 16, this and this, all this is becoming darker, it's becoming thinner. You can see very clearly the science geography is changing again. This was very dense before, but this will also become thin. And I think this part of the world is going to grow. Stronger and stronger. So there is no, there is no uh, ambiguity about the potential we have. We need to only put into put a first into this. So this slide is just to just to sort of show you that some individual labs have contributed some way. I was saying that. He was my mentor for a while, and he was also my mentor for a while. And we have made this contribution. We have made this contribution because of good students like I had Ashwini Sharma and Pravind Kumar and Shari as an MSc student. But I should tell you one incident about how we select people today, how we used to select before. And today the mass scale interview, brilliant test. And sometimes when we did not test, Prime Minister Modi says, don't introduce that there is a partiality. So he said, it's a big mechanical way. I went for a selection of BA fellowship in BARC. If he remembers, he was a student, a small student from Guadalupe. So, so when we interviewed him, I was at that time in my lab, we used to be students from certain background. So I initiated a lot of things in biochemistry, protein transportation, as building up that part much more than 
where Shepard, we could take care. So when he gave an interview, I asked him very simple questions. He answered. But many people in the committee, either they didn't sort of, they didn't think the questions were very complicated. When we gave marks, he lost by one mark. I gave him out of eight out of ten. And so he was not selected there. So I told Dr. Mahajan, who was chairman of the committee, that is very, very bright. He said, okay. Why don't you give him more marks? So I thought everybody would give him, him marks. No, no, if you have to, if you want to select, if you want to select someone, don't have any restriction in your mind, give the maximum. So that is the trick, that's the methodology we have to apply for others to think in, in their own way. So he wasn't selected. Then I asked him, I did something, no? Okay. <laughs> then I asked him that you come, come to my lab, because I felt a little not very nice about it. So you say things, no? But you are not sure. But I was surprised that after a day, one day or so, he appeared in the lab. <laughs> so, and then when he came, he, he was very, I should say, he had very good qualities that he was the most successful man to begin with to crystallize protein and produce many crystals and he produced many structures and, and he published many papers. And I'm sure those papers were helpful for him to get employment here as well, in addition to his postdoctoral work. But many students of mine have got the positions because the work they did in the past very strongly. I should also tell something about Provin. It was not a normal, normal selection. You know, IIGs somehow have created some kind of, or in some sense, I would say, you should be restricted to only beta degrees, but people think that the research is good in IIT. And I'm very sorry to say that IITs are making them less and less competitive in research because of many factors. So he went to meet some professor in IIT Delhi in the physics department, some Dr. Sharma. He went to meet him and he said that, you oh, your accent is hopeless, I can't, can't deal with you. It's afterwards. <coughs> then he, with his friend, came to my lab. He said, look, these people are talking like this. It's not a good thing. So I heard him for a while, for 15 minutes. I heard him, we both realized, and I said that, okay, one of you can join here, and decide among yourself. So he, so he chose himself to, <laughs> to continue. And then, of course, he did very, very, very good research, he made a lot of progress, and then in the meantime, I decided to enter as an MSc student. She was the most successful MSc student, published 200 papers. Then after his PhD, she went away after her MSc, went to USA. After his PhD, I wanted him to continue with me because you always want some, not like IIT, that we will not take our PhD student is rubbish. You, anybody who is good, you should be able to retain. It's a team, you have to construct a team. So I was very keen to keep him because my, this, uh, the structure of determination component was becoming weaker. So I told him to stay on, but he wouldn't stay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and so some days you find that he, he went away to USA. He sort of questioned very much. So that, this is how we, we used to go for a student in those years, but nowadays, of course, you have an examination, they clear an examination, they come. If they don't clear, they don't come. So they have made huge contribution to this number from all that, that this is not just like that. So students like them have made very huge contribution. Now there is an argument that one is that you contribute to the database, that you do more science and contribute to the database. And then next is that whether you utilize the database for your, for your 
scientific research or for your whatever uh, applied science you want to do. How much database you are using, to which you have in the world where people have contributed, and you can see that. You see in terms of countries, Asia is moving up and up. And if you see in the next slide that Country-wise, you see at this moment, we are number two. And if President Donald Trump continues for four years, <laughs> I, I, you don't know where you will go. So, and I had something in between that China, you know, someday, they were saying, why, they are, they are, why India is ahead of them in certain areas, areas like space, areas like information technology, areas like pharmaceutical, and Indian co-workers and technicians are the key. So U.S. is losing, like we lose that key, we must attract them. So they are talking about this strategy, and China is our, not only our competitor, it's a bad competitor. <laughs> so it's very, very unfair for all of us who work in scientific research who want to compete globally. And if people you do strengthen and they go into your competitors, you know, we are the losing side. So you have to worry about that. And I also, I also agree with, with these uh, other matters that drug trials and ethical matters of our country is becoming a little bit negative, which is not a good sign. If you have to contribute with other countries, your other parameters, you already have some, some not so great parameters, or other parameters should not go against us. So that is the situation. So you can see that. So this, this, this is just an indication in terms of a shelter that the geography of science is changing rapidly. And he comes out with some kind of numbers. He, his main research is all the time how to produce numbers to inspire Indian young minds that you have a great potential. So don't think that only in going to USA or any other best country that produce good science. You can produce good science if you work in your own country, but you have to work with similar intensity of determination. So that is what is the first all the time. And I think you should think like this. We have a possibility. And one, when I was making some presentation like this, one fresh Indian postdoc returned to India. He stood up and said, no, there is, a, there is an issue. The issue is that Indian science is a problem. This was, I said, what is the problem? The problem is that they talk that whatever Indians produce is not reliable. How the hell it can be in science and research? But this is a kind of when you try to grow, there will be people who will try to sort of say things of that kind. So uh, I think this is, this is something we have to worry about. And to depict this, I just picked up this card from the newspaper. And you know, most of you might have seen that this was in Vichia. 2014, you see the guy with the cow of bull. The space he wanted to be part of this club after they sent something Mangalyan or something like that. When they sent they had, so they, they make this that you look at these guys, they are still with the club card and then they want to be part of the elite club. And then you see in 2016, when India sent a maximum number of 104 supplies, 104, and these guys have much less now they are worrying about and this is a big market and big achievement. So now you see who is sitting inside and who is knocking at the door. So things can change, I think you need to work. And an American professor once in Germany was marking for me, hey your Bollywood is very excited. They to make a dance. Every senior professor said these words. So there are areas that India have crossed for the head of all countries and Bollywood is one of them. 
Bollywood, cricket, information technology, pharmaceutical industry, space. And I think we need to get this stage in drug discovery and structural biology and biotechnology. Many years before, once in Germany, I read that the biotechnological growth in India was 46% at that time, in Germany they said it was only 3%. So these are possibilities that we can become wonderful. Now just to give you a very simple thing, when you talk about bacteria with your enemy, what is distinct in bacteria and us? The most important distinction is cell wall. The bacterial cell wall has some structure which humans do not have. And these cell wall molecules are known as I mean, they are peptidoglycans. There are some polymers which construct the cell wall of bacteria, which is not in humans. So, if you can have something which is specific to deal with bacterial cell wall, it will be a perfect medicine because it will have nothing to do with human thing. And because it has nothing to do with human thing, it will be a perfect medicine. If you think about this, so. You identify one of the problems why we are not able to make good drugs because we are not very sure about the targets we, we choose. But this is a very well known target. So this is a gram positive, gram negative, and if you have this fellow is a microbial acid here. So can we target these molecules to the bacterial cell wall and do something to bacteria to make discovery, to make antibacterial molecules? So some years before, I must also tell you that some people in India, in, in behind countries, the, the countries which are still sort of wondering about glorification, no price is in that time. I've seen a work with Robert Huber, he was a mentor at the time when he was contributing to science, very, very, he was a stronger scientist. He's thinking that time. And now we met afterwards after we got Nobel Prize. And he's really gone down. His thinking is gone down. The confidence is gone down. So Nobel Prize generally, I think, in my opinion, bring negative to that because then you are, you are sort of satisfied, you don't want to worry about it. Nevertheless, it is not for the Nobel Prize, but it's the first time that 2011, innate immunity was recognized. Some people felt that there is something like an native immunity, and because they explain the mechanism of native immune proteins, their action. And that's how first time these two guys got Nobel Prize for native immunity. So there is a recognition that native immunity is understood by people. But what we are looking here, very simple thing I will just do, very quickly, small scientific observation. Now, when you talk about native immunity, since this is the, these are the proteins which are the first to recognize invading microbes. Isn't it? The common all, all people know. Now, where there is a possibility of infection, these proteins are expressed, the cells express this protein, proteins of immunity, which recognize that the cell wall molecules, which are distinct from human cells. So these are the sites where they are very prominently expressed. We just picked up some protein from this and just to show you that how do you think about how do you think about a protein or a drug in that sense. So <clears throat> first thing you see that the proteins the proteins which bind to cell wall molecules of bacteria, how are they expressed in different animal species? Can we get some information from this? And it's a very simple people do in biochemical lab. A simple lab as we have said, this particular protein, you see, is in poor sign very high, in family very high. Rest of the animals, this protein has a low concentration. So the epidemiological data indicated that these two animals, poor sign and chemical, have less infections of the mammary gland. So there is a correlation with that. This protein seems to be very important. And just to quickly 
when you see there is a very common disease, mastitis, and there is a very serious issue. India is the highest milk producing country at this moment. But they lose a lot of milk because of this mastitis of the memory gland, infection of the memory gland. And you can see when there is a disease, this protein acts very fast and tries to fight. So this is a very critical protein for that purpose. And this just now these are the proteins, they are secreted by memory gland into the milk, but they are not milk proteins, but they are antibacterial proteins. This particular protein, in these animals low, in these animals low, here are abundant. And it doesn't have other, other proteins. All these proteins are very low. So this, these two animals have this particular protein, which is specifically binds to bacterial cell wall molecule, in high concentration, and other members which also produce antibacterial effect by some other mechanism, they are low in concentration. So this gave an idea that this protein is very important in these two animals. Now, based on the studies we did, very simple things I will based on the studies on human protein and family protein and porcine protein, what what is the what is that you talked about basic bacteria that has changed. Well, animals can change their proteins to track a bacteria on their own. Not only that, we have to make it a lab. So this particular protein, let's take an example of chemical. The only difference is few amino acids changed. And by those two amino acids changing, the protein acts as a dimer. And in human it acts as a monomer. This is the only change. And you change some amino acids, it's a behavior change. So I will not give you a detail, but I will just show you. These are the bacteria cell wall molecules there, the components we are taking. So just to show you how this makes a difference. Now the main difference, this protein makes a dimer. One dimer and a dimer. The human protein is a monomer. So change few amino acids in this protein, and binding affinity to bacteria cell wall molecules is enhanced manifold, 10 to the power 3 times 4. What has changed that is a dimer, it's a monomer. And the, how does it matter? This is an engineering, I think. Engineering people do the same things. Now, if you see this human protein, where does where do these compounds bind? This is bacterial cell wall molecule, lipopolysaccharide. It binds like this. So when two molecules interact, the larger the contact they have, more the interactions they will have. And how will they have larger contact? If they have a complementary Surfaces. This is how we design engineering tools as well. So you can see that this is where it's binding. Some interactions are taking place, but many interactions may be missing. The monomer of a human. Now you see the another cell wall molecule the same way, and then peptidoglycan like another molecule the same way. Okay? Now we compare the structure of a monomer of camel and monomer of human identical. Only difference is that camel protein is a dimer, human protein is a monomer. The binding site in human protein here is a monomer, shallow. But when it becomes dimer, it becomes deep cleft. So just to compare, superimposing totally. So once it becomes a dimer, you see, large portion is now buried inside. So wherever the binding site is, this is the kind of you could not think of this information until you observe that there is a binding site and it glamorizes to make that binding site as a better clef than it was present on the monomer. So it becomes a very, very powerful binding. That's how it improved. And this glamorization occurred because only two amino acids change in the surface. So histidine, arginine, lutein, protein. That's it. So it, Animals also doing that. Now the question you would ask, why only these two animals have done, why not other animals have done? A guy got this thing in Germany, used to come to my lab, Jews from my research. So one day he went to the Whistler bottle to this uh, Jama Masjid area. He specially wanted to go there. He saw people are happily, healthily walking here and there. He came back and said, 
Hey, but if there is a problem, why did God so help you there? Like we decided to drop the bottle and went there. And he went many times. And he said that I am now happier. You know, many times, exposure to these best where we should not be afraid of organisms. We should be very happy that we study microbiology. We should propagate good quality of organisms. They improve your innate immune system and treat human beings who suffer in experimental samples. So, I mean, so this is how so you can see that this camel has done this thing. Now, camel not only made one diamond, but two diamond diamonds. This is meant for the cell wall molecules which are present on the gram, cell wall of gram negative and gram positive bacteria. Microbacterium tuberculosis is different. So, the second diamond, now you look at the second diamond. When you look at the look at protein structures, the way I think engineering people make models, look at this, your eyes. Eyes are the best of solution. No calculation, no computational biology. Bioinformatics. Is it? So look at the molecule of the protein. It will give you an idea as to what will fit there, what kind of chemical structure it will have. And <clears throat> looking at this, we realize that fatty acid type of substance will bind to this well. And when we did experiment, so some of them, they are similar to this uh, microbacterium tuberculosis. And just to see the same way in this dimer, how, how, do, how does it make a difference? You see, this is where this one different fatty acid you just check, you check with many components so that it's not. It's not any by chance. So like this, they are binding here. But you see, so, so little interaction. So affinity will be less. So potency will be less. So now if you see, now when you use a dimer, this all get buried. But for the monomer only, this was there. So dimerization in this particular case, in this protein to the nativity, which is done by two animals, by Making it a dimer, it has become a protein of high potency. And hence, as soon as you are infectious, it is attracted very much and binds quickly. And that's the that so if you very quickly control bacteria, you succeed faster. That is we need to move faster. Please look, okay? We'll finish in five minutes. So like this, so what is the scene with this protein? This protein in human is just one molecule. In cannabis, you have one diamond and the diamond. This is for tuberculosis, this is for other organisms. So it's a very perfect case. Now, obviously, you are living in this part of the world. Although, when you look at molecular level structure, that should be the last. But life scientists you know, and other Pharma company will say, show it in cell lines. Does it happen there also? So when you do all the cell lines, the standard test, if you see here, it's very self-actuated that when you give the cell wall LPS, then you see how this particular indicator becomes. And when you give this protein, this gets controlled like that, control. In other words, when you test this protein in the cell, in the, in the cell lines, it shows effect as much uh, as indicated by your binding study. I didn't show the binding study. Binding study is in structural studies. Now, similarly, you do this for microbacterial tuberculosis. And then you do some rough experiments where we put this protein. These are really old fashioned rough experiments. But then some experiment was done by one of our colleagues in AMU. He has been working on antibiotics. So he combined this protein with antibiotics and then he measured these things. You see that the effect of antibiotics, the effect of this protein and the population, of course when there is a resistance to antibiotics, these numbers will change. But this number cannot change. Since this is the cell wall of bacteria, 
the bacteria has will have to change its cell wall if it has to not interact with this protein. So you see that these numbers are significant. So this protein given in combination with antibiotics is very effective. Next is of course you have to see on animals. And if you see on animals, when you give this alone, when you provoke this, when you give a lethal load of this, it's a white light, when you give it this protein, it survives. So all all these indications, what you observe structurally, biochemically in the lab, are also proven on cell lines and on animals. So this protein shows this high potential when it's in diabetic form, and this has been exported by camel and porcine, and the rest of the animals have not done this. And primarily it might have happened because these two animals survived more host type conditions, and their system responded that way. So they have done this modification. How can you do structures of proteins? In the lab also you can think that this may be a long thinking process. Here there is a ready-made answer to this. So what this protein does, the primary protein, because the hypertensive is bind to bacteria to cell wall very quickly and neutralizes bacteria. And that's how it controls infection. And this slide is just to show that how this protein sequesters where these cell wall molecules are protruding out. And this is how when you sequester bacteria, isolate this from the bacteria, bacteria will vanish. So this is just the binding effect. Other this protein has other components also. Once it binds them, it does hydrolysis also. But we don't want to go into those details. So essentially, the message is that bacteria are changing themselves to protect themselves. Animals are also changing themselves to protect themselves. And this process will go on. And we have to only learn from what is actually happening in nature and take clue from this. Now this protein, since it has a potency 10 to the power three times higher than the protein present in humans, it can be exploited as a therapy protein. Either you modify the human protein, those couple of mutations you do, or you try this protein. The protein is identical, the structure is same. But to be on the safer side, the human protein, these mutations can be carried out and can be therapeutically exploited. So the issue of that the antibiotic resistance is answered by this situation. That you have a protein now which is producing therapy fat by binding to bacterial cell wall molecules. Until bacteria are able to change their cell wall, this protein will not suffer any resistance from bacteria. So that is one solution. And one of our startup friendly small company in Chennai is trying taking this further to see whether it can be theoretically exploited. So this is one of the ways that we can respond to your disaster and concerns. So, so this is the gist I just wanted to be that it is not just bacteria who, who are doing this, we all are doing this, and in fact we should be turned to the bacteria that they're forced to think, the forced to grow in our science. So never call organisms as challenge to mankind, or dangerous to mankind, and there are only challenges, and these challenges we can respond. And this is how the potential of this kind of science is high. Your biotechnology should be so excited when they get information about new bugs and new infectious diseases. So there is nothing to worry about. There is only to, to become determined. Your system is doing it on its own. We can add to this by doing things in there and produce valuable molecules. So this is what I just wanted to convey that we need not worry about organisms. We should rather like them. And that's why biological sciences and pharmaceutical industry will continue to grow and we will have better career opportunities. We will have good life, engineers and physicists 
chemistry. They're going behind. So I think we should be happy not to worry so much. You keep organizing seminars, I will be happy. So I think the Indian is a very, very positive situation. Thank you so much. And questions or good advice for us? The one we took at the, this building there, the shoes. So you figured out the way to the shoes? Yes, it's closed and so the company is doing their part. Yes. Yes. And so have you adjusted this routine on the MPR street? Have you determined their, you know, there's a way to calculate frequency of resistance? There's a way yeah. to see if bacteria will ever pick up resistance? This very nice time in start a company. Very, very quickly, so they decided that they would do this part for themselves and for us. So we are not doing that part, but they are doing this. And this is... Does it seem like this routine targets multiple targets, which is a good thing? Uh, because if you target multiple targets, then it's a material less likely to be detected. Mainly this has one molecules. By the level. They are from that bacteria. more difficult. So we, as of now, it looks very promising. The solution to the... Uh, you are your from which subject? So what I'm saying is that uh, we... I want to appreciate. Because, because of the bacteria, we got good opportunities to work and make our life uh, and all right. the scientific challenges in the But at the same time, we take many different of diet. The fire. Died. Died. Died also. You cannot give them back. India's population is going much faster. Right. I think it, this is perhaps it. not so many people died with the infections at the normal infections. They have many other problems than the rest. But I must tell you that this risk is worth it. There was a time that uh, I had a colleague in Aries who wanted to give him some molecules to try on patients. He got a scare. I tried the same thing with a colleague in Germany. He happily tried. And subsequently he became more famous than my colleague in Aries. So I think uh, until we take risk, we can become. I would say that. We should be more aggressive. Some people will die, but we can be restored. No, it's a life. It's not taking it. So that, I mean, yeah. Uh, I'm also from a completely different background. I'm a civil engineer by training. Um, when I talk about the bacteria versus human, you know, I understand the bacteria is a single wall, a single cell. And human, Millions of cells. Uh, and now, when we think about fight between a single cell bacteria versus multiple multitude of cells of human beings, so we understand that a single cell cannot fight with so many number of cells. Now, the bacteria has to grow in number, you know, so much, so that they can fight with human, you know, or human. Uh, Defense mechanism. Now, now we think about like a war between two uh, sites where there are 10,000 soldiers here and 10,000 soldiers here. And think about a war that you know, 10, 000, from the 10,000 soldiers here, one soldier comes and tries to fight with this guy, with this thing of 10,000 soldiers. So they'll never succeed, right? So they will only succeed when 10,000 people attack 10,000 people. Now, for attacking 10,000 people at the unison, there should be a signal or a war card. You know, that should be there, you know, which uh, tells this numbers of bacteria to kill or to attack those cells, different cells of human beings. So, 
The understanding is that you know, the communication flow, there should be a communication channel between bacteria you know, to attack the human cells. And whether by trying to disrupt those communication uh, mechanisms, can there be a different mechanism? Yeah, okay. I think this is the best question. Do you need answer for this or do I have it? <laughs> 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 no, no. But I want to say that, you know, bacteria is not attacking. This is the mode of more the bacteria has to survive. So it is it's a natural thing what bacteria has doing. Only we are doing natural things to bacteria. <laughs> no, no. So bacteria modifying this just wants to survive. It is not interested in doing anything to mankind. <laughs> so that is the philosophical way we look at this. But you, your sense was the five gel pair. Yeah. Your sense was the five gel pair. Yeah. No, no. My point is that you know okay. there is a communication between these bacteria. So oh, that yeah, sure. they can you know enhance the yeah, yeah, sure. very very much. Yeah, yeah, sure, very much. Very much. So this means that you should do molecular biology. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is an achievement for you. And if civil engineers can enter the biological field, biology problem will be solved. You know, if the engineers have questions, your initial theory is not. So, as 
the time to end my word of thanks. So first of all, I would like to thank Professor Jacob who came all the way from Delhi to deliver an excellent talk with us over the community. And along with that, Bob Chow, funds in that. So learning with fun is an extraordinary thing from the sir. It was a real honor for us. And along with that, we could get some commercials of our house and our esteemed colleagues. But that's why about the PMGs and all. So that was also a very similar thing for us. So thank you so much, sir, for your presentations and all. Then I would like to thank the design section, Hobbies Club, for the help in preparing the flex designs. And we thank Education Technology Club for video recording of this event. And I would like to also sincerely thank the Biotech Department faculty, staff, especially the staff responsible for maintaining the auditorium, Mr. Simon Ji, Rajesh Ji, Kuminder Ji, everybody who helped in this activity in the school. And I would like to thank student volunteers of the Institute of Nature Series for taking active participation in all the aspects and making this event a very successful one. And last but not the least, I would like to convey my sincere thanks uh, to Dr. Gauri Shetty and Dr. A.M. Singh for coordinating the whole things and making this things happen. They have been coordinating all the time, getting all the information at the right time. So thank you for all your support and let's give a huge applause to all the entire team.